was Johnny. They're all gonna laugh at you. They're all gonna laugh at you. Get away from her, you bitch. We all go a little mad sometimes. Haven't you? Let's face it, baby. These days, you gotta have a sequel. You fly back to school now, little Starling. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Once Upon a Nightmare. As always, I am your host Lorraine Purden and I'm here to chat all things horror. This week we are going back a long way. We are going back 50 years to 1974 and I have a guest. This is the Towering Inferno. Steve McQueen and Paul Newman race against time as one tiny spark becomes a night of blazing suspense. The Towering Inferno. It's out of control coming your way. Twentieth Century Fox and Warner Brothers present Irwin Allen's production of The Towering Inferno. Those people are gonna die up there. Something's not done. Not much motive here. So you can stop worrying about me. What about me down there worrying about you? I'll never let you go anywhere without me again. I'll be back with the whole fire department. The Towering Inferno. Set me down on the scenic elevator. Now, the producer of the Poseidon Adventure brings you more spectacle, more stars, more suspense than you've ever seen in one motion picture. Steve McQueen is the fire chief. Paul Newman is the architect. Step by step, floor by floor, this is a race against time to save hundreds of people trapped in a night of blazing suspense as the world's tallest building becomes the towering inferno. Tower Inferno was directed by John Gillerman. The screenplay was written by Sterling Siliphant and the plot is from two separate novels. First, we've got The Tower by Richard Martin Stern and then we have The Glass Inferno by Thomas N. Scorsia and Frank M. Robinson. It has a very big cast. We've got Paul Newman, Steve McQueen, William Holden, Faye Dunaway, Robert Vaughan, Richard Chamberlain and Fred Astaire, and well, many. And this takes place in San Francisco when an architect known as Doug Roberts, played by Paul Newman, he comes back after a holiday to realize that the skyscraper he has been working on has not used the specifications that he gave. And because of this, and it's to do with wiring, they short circuit and a fire starts on the 81st floor. Above them, there is a party celebrating this new building And it becomes a fight to get everyone out of the building before the fire takes over and kills them all. So with this episode, because I was turning 50 myself this year, I wanted to get a film that was 50 years old. And I wanted to get my best mate on who isn't the biggest horror fan, which we always mention in our episode. So I thought I'd get something that I know uh, that she'd watch. And so for this show, I have on my best friend, Harry. Hey Harry, how are you? Hello. Hello. Yeah. I'm a- <laughs> how have you been? Uh, I'm very pregnant. Um, <laughs> straight in with it. Straight in with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just you know, uh, it's 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 like currently it's like having a bowling ball in my tummy. So make of that what you will. <laughs> I know. God, not long now though. Only a couple of months. No. Nine weeks. Wow. Uh-huh. And then it's going to yeah. be the most amazing experience of your life. <laughs> I sense sarcasm. <laughs> no, there are some amazing moments and some not so amazing moments. But anyway, we won't talk about those. <laughs> like with this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you want to let everyone know, like, kind of like who you are and what you do? And I'm Harry. Um, I don't know if your listeners know of our past together. Uh, doing the podcast, show with the podcast, the movie and TV podcast. So, uh, yeah, I used to be a co-host on that. Um, and I'm essentially a content creator for a, a, a red brick university. <laughs> that's right. Um, soon to be on maternity leave. So if you want a job there, have a look. Job, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, I'm also an artist. A very good artist. I posted something on my page. So uh, go have a look at that. Yes. No. Excellent. Where is where? What's your art Instagram page called? Peck Duck. Yeah. No, no. She's she's really good. And I what I was surprised about when it comes to your art was how I had been friends with you for three years. And you were always doodling and doing bits. And I thought, oh, she's a good, good at drawing. And but I didn't really think much of it. And then one day you drew something. I was like, where the fuck did that come from? And, like, what do you... and then all these amazing, <laughs> if you go and look at peck.art, all these amazing drawings. I'm like, I knew you for about three years before I realized you could draw like that. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, comes and goes, my my, you know. The creativity for it ebbs and flows, yes. also the commissions. <laughs> no, 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 you're very good. And you do paintings as well, don't you? So she does it all. But yeah. do you just want to spend a film, this next thing where this film was on for like nearly three hours talking about Paul Newman and how hot he is? Will we just do that? <laughs> well, if you're jumping straight in, I'm don't you go say, super he, he won out for me. I'm sorry, but Mr. Blue Eyes, oh, the Blue Eyes. Other oh, blue eyes because it wasn't Frank Sinatra blue eyes, <laughs> but um, yeah, Steve McQueen was the one for me in this. And normally, I you know, I wrote an obituary in, in, at university about Paul Newman and with because of my love for him, and I was really shocked that he wasn't. The but one was in that story. because <laughs> Steve McQueen was the fireman? No, do you know, like, if we okay, so if we're gonna jump straight in, I think. Part of it is because Steve McQueen was what I found the only um, decent really? performance in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I found him to be far more believable and, and, and yeah, because uh, likable, because he seems to be the only sensible one um, in the movie. Uh, so, and, and, his yeah his performance like just like the the simple thing where he's setting up the detonators and he's just like do you get that he's he just does it so naturally whereas i think a lot of the other performances are very over the top including at times Paul Newman, oh unfortunately. that's quite interesting yeah yeah <laughs> no, I found when I was watching this, I kept Googling him and I was like, you're so like Henry Cavill and you just like beautiful men. But um, I will actually put some substance Newman. into this episode as we talk about the film and not just perv completely over <laughs> Paul Newman. Falling back on old tropes and just perving yeah, on. Go listen to Show Me the Podcast <laughs> and you will hear uh, the way me and Harry carry on. Um, but no, I thought, no, I, I do... I do think that his performance, Steve McQueen's performance, was very um, authentic. I almost felt like that's what he did as a living. And there were reports that there yeah, was yeah. a fire there and he helped and he was very good and all that kind of stuff. Um, well, he had extensive training with the fire department. Oh, right. Okay. Well, that, that shows then because I, I did feel when I was watching it like he 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 knew the, the job. He seemed weathered and he seemed like there's a scene where uh, one of his guys, one of the firemen come up to him and say, you know, the outer elevator has yeah. fucked up. <laughs> and and he, he just he just does these looks and he's just like, you know, in his head you're thinking, fuck, what am I going to do? And he does it so naturally and it does seem really... Um, of the moment it doesn't seem like i've just read this in the script and i'm gonna you know so yeah there's an authenticity so did you not think so would because you said there that you felt like the rest of them were a bit over the top and i can see that with some of them but kind of the like take away the looks okay let's just take that away (laughs) um but with with poor newman no no, never take them away so at the start we have this typical kind of um money greed cut corners and this is the reason this happens and Paul Newman seems to be the one that's like you know why did you do this why didn't you stick to what I said and I did feel like he was also a very like genuine character and I didn't think that was over the top and sent in a sense like do you know what I mean because it's very believable that like I find myself being frustrated because we see these things all the time don't we where it's like all this happened because you wanted to save a few pounds. 
well yeah i mean that's the overall sort of moral of the story isn't it it's like don't like yeah you, you want to save face you want to um save some money don't take warnings seriously cut corners and assume because we were talking about this before we were recording never assume yeah, exactly. because it fucks you. <laughs> and it comes back to bite you in the ass and that but did yeah. one <laughs> but he there were parts in it though where I was like, this reminds me so much of Jaws when he doesn't want them to go into the water because of what it would do for the summer trade. And I was just like, because the the, the yeah. guy in it that was kind of running the whole thing. And But the, the thing that, like with Jaws, it's like, just don't go in the water. Stay out of the water, you'll be fine. But with, with this, I was like, you're above the fire. It can grow. Why do you think that you can contain this like even if it was the smallest of fire just get people out because we all know how quickly i mean we've all seen backdraft we all know how quickly this stuff can get out of control and i just like there's greed mm -hmm. and then there's greed like this was just like another level of you're willing to put all these people's lives at risk because you want to save face again and i think i can i think i mean i don't know but I kept thinking yep. of Titanic with this movie and I could see how Cameron possibly lifted concepts of it, but also like historically that potentially did happen with the Titanic, but like that, the guy mm. in that, I can't remember his name, but he's like, oh, it's unsinkable. It's unsinkable. It won't sink. So we've put half the life yeah. amount of lifeboats and blah, blah, blah. It's a similar sort of yeah. narrative, isn't it? That, Douchebag, douchebag people at the top. <laughs> so, <laughs> excuse me. So, yeah, it's it's one of those. But I don't. But I know what you're saying about Paul Newman and and in the beginning. And I think yeah, he's great. But then the, the but it, again, it's still got this. You know, because whilst he's saying all that, we're still just coming off all that dramatic intro with the helicopter and his sunglasses and the music and everything. And you're still in like. Ooh, he's a hatchet. He, you know, he. he but, but when Steve McQueen comes in, you're like, oh, he's going to save us. He he brings an earthiness to it that's like he's. No, the actually, savior. that that's <laughs> actually a fair comment because when he walks, when you see him kind of walking through the building, and it's all like it was almost like a a, a model show. I think sometimes, mm. like they do it with, you know, male and female act uh, actors, they do rely heavily sometimes a lot on what a certain person looks like and while I appreciate mm -hmm. the view it, it is very much look we can make this guy look amazing all the girls are going to be like woohoo and the guys even if you're straight and but I yeah no I, I do I do get what you mean in that sense is I think sometimes while I think Paul Newman is a good actor and I think he was great in this and I mean I've seen him in films obviously when he was older and the looks weren't the same as when he was younger and he was still great. I think sometimes they rely on certain shots and certain scenes of let's make him look as hot as possible as he swans through the lobby of a building. So, yeah, yeah. I think from that point, whereas Steve McQueen kind of just comes in and goes, right, what do I need to do? Where, where's the fire? Yeah, let's put it out. You know, there's a bit more yeah. um, realness to it. In say yeah, as well, in saying that, I'm, I might change my thoughts a little bit because... I just thought back to earlier when I was watching, yeah, because well, I watched it before we mm -hmm. <laughs> recorded. <laughs> um, but you, 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 at the beginning, you think he's going to be the one who is the the, yeah. the savior. I mean, he is in, the, in a sense towards the end of the movie, but you think that that's his role. But then him and his colleague go and check yeah. out the fire, don't they? And his colleague gets really badly burnt, and <laughs> OJ Simpson rocks up. <laughs> <laughs> Which I was, was yeah crazy. I was like oh yeah okay yeah. hello <laughs> yeah and he's just like and 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 um yeah is it Doug his name yeah Paul Newman's character Doug he's just looking at his mate like oh my god oh my god and he's panicking and that's mm. not, I think that would be a natural reaction to somebody who doesn't hasn't dealt with that kind of situation before and OJ Simpson his he he goes you know what are you doing? Call the police or the fire department and an ambulance or whatever. And I think in Paul Newman's performance there, yes, there is an authenticity to 
It's still just not as good as before. <laughs> you know what? That, that's fine. Like when you watch it and you you see it, but I I do think sometimes that when you have certain people in, which is unfair because it takes away from them, but they, they can sometimes be a bit, that just shows me being a perv really, but they can sometimes be a bit of a distraction. Well, I think that's a big part of this movie's problem is that it's a lot, the majority of the cast are, or were well known at the time, weren't they? They were like high grossing actors and I, and I, and just, I mean, we know who they are because we're big film buffs, but I think, um, people watching it now probably wouldn't necessarily be yeah. like, oh, that's that's you know so and so and so and so. But back then you'd be like, oh, that's Faye yeah. Dunaway. Oh, that's Steve McQueen. Oh, that's you know. And it, I, you know, it took me out of it a little bit. I imagine it did potentially audiences then. And it's like with movies these days, they're not necessarily disaster flicks, but you get all those you know all star cast ones like uh, what is it like Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, all that those shit ones. <laughs> that are all star cast and you're like i don't believe it because julia roberts and you're no i i I know what you mean with that and like apparently even i read behind the scenes like that there was a lot of trouble there because apparently paul newman and steve mcqueen were bickering over who got the most lines and there was another yeah the exact same amount yeah it's kind of like in one of the other guys in it was bickering because he was a big star and Faye Dunaway wouldn't turn up on time and I'm like part of me is like oh would you all just grow up you've got this amazing opportunity and you're bitching over lines and apparently Steve McQueen didn't act for like four years or something after the trauma of being in this movie yeah and I googled it and he didn't he did an uncredited thing but apart from that he wasn't in it for 78 but was that because he got into cars, well, I don't know I mean that's no, what I mean. I mean I don't know it could be for anything but so I I picked this because as I said Harry in the intro Harry's not a big horror person but I was gonna ask why you picked this no but I that because I wanted to do 1974 obviously because it it was the year I was born and it's my birthday year and stuff like that oh, and that's why oh. yeah that's what I did well I did once did the Texas Chainsaw Massacre which is 74 but I knew anyway if I hadn't you wouldn't have watched that um but it's such a good film Harry it's so good um but so I wanted to pick something and while this is more uh action drama thriller I think you know being caught in a building that's on fire a bit scary oh you yeah, know well there's, there's yeah there's definitely horror elements to it uh for sure like um and, and, like, and like visual representation and also don't like inferno like just makes you think dante's inferno yep. road to hell or the layers of hell or whatever um so but no yeah t- like visually and like yeah just visually you you it all you kind of get representations of a hellish landscape especially with all the reds and mm. the smoke and the oranges and flames so i, I get it yeah, see a tenuous link. <laughs> yeah, and I—I I mean, I when I was I was watching a little bit of it today just to kind of refresh my mind with some of it, and ugh, I hate to say it, but there were elements of it, and I was like, oh my god, this reminds me of like nine eleven, when you see people yeah. ju- like you, you know, obviously this was after that, but oh my god, when I the the pictures of people like jumping out, and obviously they're in this skyscraper, which you know we've both been to the states, they're very big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when you look up at them but um no I do feel like there was a lot of horror kind of elements to it not in the traditional sense of what we think of when we think is horror but one of the scenes that really kind of stood out for me and that kind of gave me like the Poseidon have you seen the original Poseidon adventure I haven't seen the original yeah that, the that's movie. a great film and I looking into the 70s actually there was a lot of disaster movies like this but yeah. there was that one scene where Paul Newman rescues the two kids and the woman and then they're going down the stairs and those stairs go and to me that was that that scene was really intense and I was really shocked that she got down there I kind of thought we had her for the film after that that obviously didn't happen but I was I I thought the kids would go down and I thought she would fall right but I yeah yeah well, I thought when he was going into their flat, that was quite scary because you see like the kids' clown toys on the floor mm-hmm. with the like, you know, the flames around it. I don't know, I keep going flames. Yeah. <laughs> and that was quite, um, 
that was quite ho- like actual horror like um it's um what's the word i'm looking for sinister yeah um and i was in but i th- yeah i think that's because i think it's because that, that's how to, how to wear this you you care for children in movies a bit more than you care for adults especially in this movie when they're all like dickheads or yeah. <laughs> you know having greedy of it. <laughs> yeah greedy um so in this when it comes down to the kids you're like oh my god is he gonna find them or you know they're gonna is he gonna find them and they're gonna be burnt and stuff it's a, they, in this particular section it's probably the horror the horror and i mean that in the in the creepy you know dark sense of it is probably more intense by than anywhere else in the rest of the movie yeah because we we'd seen that scene i think it was before where um the couple you know they were having relations and then they realize mm. that there's a fire yeah. and he tries to, he wets a towel doesn't he and puts it over his head yeah. and he tries to get out and we see that awful thing where he's just basically running around on fire and then for her she knew that she was screwed over and um i mean i felt so sorry for her because obviously she'd witnessed the horror of this guy being burnt to death and the only way out for her was out the window and it's kind yeah. of one of those things and it's back to like 911 when you see people jumping it's like do i either fall to my death or do i burn to death yeah you know and it was it was, that was a scary moment cuz the thing is about this film and i know it's not horror per se but like this could happen to anybody. Yes. You know, this, yeah. this is a very realistic film. It's not like, oh my God, you know, Freddy Krueger is coming to get us. No, he's not. But this could happen. And mm. I think that for me is what made it scary. And I think what made it scary is the greed of these people. Yeah. That also happens and is happening like this very day. I'm not going to get into the whole politics, but like it is happening to this very mm. day. Like, do you know what I mean? And I think that's what makes it scary. No, I'm, yeah, totally. <laughs> Sorry, I'm nothing more to add on that, but I agree. <laughs> so this is usually where your strong point is. So what did you think? Because I thought they standed up quite well today, the whole visual effects thing. I know, I thought they were really, really good. Who is it? Uh, Irwin Allen? Irwin Allen, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I thought they were amazing. I actually really thought the um, the effects of it in situ, like the city shots. Yes. Yeah. Because, like, you look back on movies of this era and you're like ooh, that's really bad like painted in yeah uh, but no it looked realistic uh, i thought it was really good and um but all the, the the you know the fire uh sequences and the, the well yeah all the action sequences were very good it was <laughs> not to discredit what you not to sort of mar what you were just saying about the woman jumping out of the window because what it represents is horrific and and yeah we've seen that mm. in real life like in 9-11 but um in watching this yes I have an analytical brain when it comes to how it was all put together and I did notice that she falls out the window and then all of a sudden you realize she's a bloke in a flame retardant suit <laughs> and you're like oh <laughs> yeah, it was nice it was really good before, up- Harry. <laughs> Sorry. I was like it was really good up until that point and I was just like oh, did they could they not have worked on that <laughs> no I know like there were moments like when they're tr- so obviously they're trying to get everyone out of the building and they're going down in the lift and the lift isn't probably the safest because that's one thing I think they always say is when there's a fire don't take a lift but to be fair the stairs weren't much better as we, yeah. we saw with smoke and what happened to Paul Newman and the rest of them but there was scenes where they made that um seat that flew through that that first woman that had to try she was the guinea pig basically and I did feel really sorry for her and she was very dramatic but at the same time (laughs) you're being yeah but do you know what I wouldn't have been happy with that scenario but yeah you did have noises now and I'm just pregnant it it was it was very though I mean you could see that it wasn't real and I get that and that's fine So there were elements of it that were very obvious. And like you said, the person jumping out of the building. I mean, there's some things in film you see that are just like, oh, come on, you're not even trying. You're not even trying. (laughs) Yeah. But then, you know, there are other parts to this movie and you can see, clearly see that the actors are 
engulfed in like these sections of flame like when Steve McQueen's running up and Paul Newman's running up the staircase and there's licks of like fire coming at him and that actually happened <laughs> you can mm. see it's like real so a the insurance on this movie must have been mega. <laughs> but b like that fair play to the actors for being that for for doing that and but it, it, it's realistic as well so yeah I, I thought the fire was very realistic mm. like I that's what I'm saying like the fact that this was you know 50 years ago I I was really surprised at how realistic it was and that's why I says I I mean yes there were elements like you said but like to say that this was 50 years ago it's quite shocking how well they actually did it yeah and these days it would probably just be done with CGI and you'd yeah. know and it'd look lame, you know? Day. What did you think of the whole, um, like the ending when they, so obviously they want to put out this fire and the only way they can do it is they're saying is they got to blow these tanks and all yeah. these blokes are like, because they all the, and this is kind of what I found interesting, especially when it comes to today, we live in this world where everyone wants equality, but that whole film was basically the women go first and the men <laughs> stay behind and I feel like we're still like that today that's the way people think and you've got all these blokes who stay behind I mean you have one or two moments where when uh you know the son the son-in-law and they're all jumping on the chair to, and I'm like you idiots you know this isn't going to end well and they're all but that's panic you know everyone's mm. panicking but then when they all tie themselves and that water comes through like that whole thing was just chaos yeah. You know, and the water's coming and the fire's there and they're jumping out of buildings and they're, they're, they're you know, jumping to their deaths and stuff like that. I thought that was a very interesting way to, because like, part of me, I was like, why, why would you put that over everyone's head? But then I suppose they probably had nowhere to go because they couldn't go down the stairway. What do you mean, put the detonators? Yeah, the, do you remember they blew up the water and all these people were tying themselves, all the blokes yeah. were tying themselves to like the, the bars and stuff. So that obviously mm -hmm. when the water came through, they didn't get washed away and stuff like that. But I was like, so obviously there was nowhere to go. But the mm. safety, <laughs> health and safety <laughs> at its finest. <laughs> this whole movie's about lack of health and safety. <laughs> oh, but it, but it was such a intense scene that they all had to, like, because every one of those people were like, you know, we don't know we're going to live through this now. Yeah, I liked that moment between um, uh, Steve McQueen and Hallor uh, Halloran, mm. his character, and um, the 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 firemen and they just like share a look like, you know, this could be the end or like you know. It, it, I thought that was a good moment. Um, it is dramatic. I mean, it is a big dramatic finale, isn't it? That bit. Um, and I was like, why is Fred and Stan there? Could they have put him in the lift? <laughs> I know. I was like, because he 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 actually got nominated, didn't he, for support an actor? But yeah, and I don't. Why? I think that was probably just oh he's been a in all these movies. Never, yeah, it was like the Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> so. Yeah, it was it was it was a nod, but yeah, and uh, he had quite a sweet character and a sweet you know relationship with someone. But the highlight of the movie is that the cat survived. Yeah, <laughs> <That's all that laughs> uh, but he he was kind of wooing the one that fell out the elevator because. Do you remember she was the one that was with Paul Newman and the two kids and I thought she was going to die then and mm. she didn't. And I was like, okay, good, good. And then she gets into the lift and that, I mean, I'm not being funny. We all knew when that glass lift was going down that that wasn't going to end well because it kept showing us that shot of the lift and then the fire and we we're like, yeah, they're, they're screwed. But the way she just, that's the thing about falling out of that is like, you have that moment where you know that you're fucked. You know you're going to be dead in a few seconds. Yeah. Like that must... I don't want to know what goes through your mind at that stage, but that must be, you know... And then he's at the end looking for her. Yeah, that was touching. That sounded really... Inc like, I, I mean that. <laughs> Insincere, that did, but it did mean... No, it no, it didn't. I think that's the thing. There was a lot of, like, emotions in this, and I think one of the things that... um that I think 
stands very uh, strong today is when Steve McQueen turns around to Paul Newman and is like, maybe one day they'll ask us how to build stuff to make them safe. And I yeah. agree with that. I think sometimes you have these jobs and these roles and they're asking the wrong. I mean, we see it in work all the time. You're talking to the wrong person, you know, talk to me, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, unfortunately we've seen that in lots of places and horrible things happening in like, you know, Grenfell, things like that. Oh people God, aren't, yeah. people are cutting corners and, and also it's like, I'm going to get quite political now, but like in my local town, they closed the fire station and it was a big fucking really? deal. Yeah, yeah. And it's happened, I think, in quite a few places, like especially across this country. But I mean, I think this movie does a great job and it says so at the beginning of saying, you know, we need these guys. You know, they're, they're not just, you know, they're for, you know, um, scenery. They They come along and they do these intense um potentially life um taking like jobs and we just like oh yeah well your opinion doesn't really matter at this point because it's just about you know numbers and stuff and it's like actually no take note of what they're saying <laughs> no I agree with that because I when we were when watching this you see what the firemen actually do and they're literally saying I I'm willing to die for to help you and I think yeah. that's the thing is like when you have a lot of the um public sector jobs so you know the doctors the nurses the police and stuff like that and I know there needs to be some work done with certain groups um yeah. but at the end of the day there you know the, the people are literally saying I, I'm I'm willing to die today I'm every day I'm I'm I may die today and you know, I, I think as well, the, the irony is you see the wages that people like Steve McQueen and Paul uh, Newman got and, and, and today what people get, like, you know, millions upon millions upon millions. So you could go play a firefighter today if you were a big A-list celebrity and get 20 million. But if you were actually a firefighter to run into a building to save a family and you could die literally any day, you get what? It, it just, it doesn't add up. It's yeah. When you really think about it, it's insane. It is, and it doesn't. It doesn't add up. Like, and yeah. I, I think I am personally one of these people that think that if you work in a job like that, you deserve all the monies. Because mm. I wouldn't do it. No, I wouldn't too. do it. Yeah, but I in that in the movie. I mean, I don't know if it's fact, but I thought it was a really interesting um, potential fact um, that Steve McQueen says, isn't that he's like. We can only stop a fire at seven floors, he said, and yet you guys keep building higher. And it's just like, oh, yeah. oh I don't remember <laughs> that line. Yeah, he says it uh, just as he meets Doug for the first time. Mm. He's like, you're the architect. He's like, and they have a little chat. And then he says that. And I was just like, gosh, that's interesting. It's like, where, I mean, <laughs> we're getting into different territory here. But yeah, when it comes to building design and stuff, how do they get away with building so high if there aren't, like, decent procedures in place you know what I mean it's baffling um, yeah because when I um lived in the states I remember a lot of the buildings had those outside you know those outside stairs yes yeah fire escapes fire escapes yeah uh, sorry <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> but when you you look at um especially after 9-11 which was what 2001 wasn't that 2001 yeah. um they're still building tall buildings. I presume they're still building them. And you would kind of think to yourself, you know, hmm, you know, let, let's get some, because you can't use the lifts and you can't use it. Yeah. I just, <sighs> there's a lot to be said. Mm, yeah, it, it comes it, back to greed again, one. doesn't it? Well, yeah, everyone likes to be, well, it's like that guy, William, William, what's it, Holden's character. Mm. Um, James Duncan, that's it. And he's just like, you know, we're, bi we're building the, because they're saying it's the biggest, tallest mm. building in the world in that in that movie. And then it makes me laugh at the end. But he's like, to his daughter, he's just like, yes, I'm going to make sure that 
with the next building, this won't happen again. It's like, mate, you ain't making another building. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're going to let you. <laughs> so this one was just like, you know, a guinea pig building. And the yeah. next one I do will be... But actually, what happened to that building? Like, what what would you do if a building caught fire like that? Because obviously the whole thing didn't go down. It was still there. So what was well, the outcome of that building? <laughs> well, this is what I was thinking because... Again, it's horrible to keep referencing it, but with nine eleven, they came down, yeah. didn't they? You know, because um, the structures just, just just crumbled. But yeah, with that with that building, what are they going to do with it? Like, yeah, what would like? How would you? But how also? How would you trust? You know, if I I I mean, if was it rented out for offices and stuff like that? But like, would you go? Yeah, I'm going to take this place after what happened. You wouldn't want to because, as well, you'd have to trust. Like, you feel like the whole thing would have been some through some really strong kind of tests to make sure the building was all, you know, kosher, and then, you know, you wouldn't want to go in there again. No, but then that comes down to the son-in-law, doesn't it? Um, yeah, Richard Chamberlain's Richard Chamberlain, character. Yeah. Cut, cut in the corners and I have to say in terms of casting I think they nailed it with him yeah because he he looks sinister he looks uh I came to this realization as I was watching it I was like who does he remind me of that's creepy he looks like Sam Reed in the new um adaptation of the interview with the vampire and <laughs> I was like he's Lestat he looks like a creepy vampire and um but I think that was good casting, and especially when you think, oh, you know, when you see him with his wife and you, you think, oh, his, his relationship's dwindling, he's probably just made a few mistakes, blah, blah, blah. But then at the end of his life, when he's on that chair and he's just trying to kick people off and he shouldn't even be in it, you're just like, no, you're a prick. And I really wish he'd survived so that the cops could come for it. And I, yeah. Yeah, no, when I saw that, when they all fell... Which we, you knew they were going to happen. You knew that you know people were going to that was going to happen to them. But I I wanted that. I wanted him to survive so he he could. And that's one thing about when people do stuff like this or whatever kind of crime. I hate it when they die in some form. I'm like, no, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna shoot a, a criminal, d- do it in the legs. Shoot their hands off. I don't give a shit if they've done something horrific. I want them to fucking stand up and pay. Don't kill them. <laughs> Like Jack Reacher, he kicks him in the legs. <laughs> yeah, he's nice. Um, but <laughs> I don't think he scares me he's so big. <laughs> yeah, he does. I saw I haven't watched Reacher, but I saw a clip of it and I was like, oh hello, you can save me. Oh, I'm re- Sorry to go on a tangent, but we've just finished the second season. Oh, I I love it. Yeah. <laughs> but in this in this one scene, he's about to have sex with this woman and I went to Alec and he's gonna break her. <laughs> Snap her an app. Do you know what? Actually, I I had forgotten that I'd actually watched this movie. I watched it years ago, and I so embarrassing. I remember with because I was like so in love with Paul Newman. I remember <laughs> wishing that I was in there so that he could say. Oh, Lorraine. <laughs> and I would go to bed at night and I'd be like making these me and Paul Newman scenarios in my head. Yeah. So, talking about like him and in a romance situation, I I kind of liked their dynamic in that he was respectful of the fact that she was just like, I do want to come with you. I do want to be with you. But, you know, I'm a, I've come to a stage in my career, which you yeah. know, I've been after for years. And I thought that was quite modern mm-hmm. for a agree. Uh, so yeah, I thought that was quite cool. No, I I agree with that because obviously that you know seventies and even today to an extent, people are like, "You're the woman, have a baby, be at home." Mm. Uh, whereas yeah, she was like, "No, I want to do my own thing." And I think, oh, yeah, I thought that was quite uh, of today a bit more. Yeah, another thing to say to 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 to. Um, uh, uh, praise it on and you might disagree is I thought it was quite a diverse casting mm. it was a good mix of cultures in there yeah and I I wasn't expecting that because again you watch movies of this era and pre yeah you know, it doesn't really happen yeah no I, I I thought that as well because they yeah they had a couple of you know I don't know was it to I'm not a fan of filling a quota no um, no, no, no but yeah so yeah there was OJ Simpson and 
Felton Perry, and then Gregory Sierra. Yeah, he um, he was Puerto Rican. So yeah, there was there was a few different, which is the way it should be because that's what life is, really, isn't it? We have all all walks yeah, of life. Definitely. But um, yeah, but when OJ, <laughs> I I think unfortunately for OJ Simpson, he is will forever be associated with you know that car chase. Uh, obviously this was before then but um yeah I I forgot he was in it and <laughs> that's like oh God, I just can't take him seriously <laughs> well I didn't know that he'd done any other acting other than what he'd done in Lethal Weapon <laughs> not Lethal Weapon oh um Naked Gun Naked Gun what yeah. I mean? well, well he was a football player wasn't he oh well, yeah, yeah yeah and this was like 1974 I was just like OJ Simpson I thought he was um would have been a lot younger but, um, no, what was he? 1947, he was born in. Do you know oh, what I mean? Right. So he's coming up to 80. And yeah, he was massive for the whole naked gun thing. Um, but oh, Jesus, even looking now, he, he was in quite a few things and TV shows and movies. And, oh my God, yeah, he did quite a bit. Um, but yeah, he was a football player. I think, yeah, I, I didn't know him as a football player because obviously I don't watch any of that kind of stuff. But um, yeah. I know him because of Naked Gun. That's how yeah. I knew him, but um, yeah, I was I was I was surprised to uh, to see him in that. But um, but overall, Did... like I, I was glad I picked this film for us to watch because I I thought it went by when I saw like the two minutes forty five and I was like oh two hours sorry forty five I was like Jesus, but I think it went by quite quickly. No, I completely disagree. Yeah, I didn't. It didn't drag for me. It dragged for me, and I was just like, why? Did you spend 40 minutes setting up all these characters who we don't actually give a shit about <laughs> when you could have just like got into it a bit quicker and wrapped up a few things a bit quicker, I think. Um I thought it was fine. I I I think as I said, in terms of um the practical effects, it was like stellar. But in terms of like storyline and yeah, the, the length of it, I was just like it could have been better. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I didn't mind it. And it did well. I think at the Oscars, it won a few things. Best mm. editing, best cinematography, best original yeah, song. Yeah, valid. Um, and nominated for best picture, best actor and stuff like that. I, I will say I did like the, in, the, the use of music in it to add that kind of like dramatic effect to it. I like all that kind of stuff. I think it's very cheesy, but I think it works. Yeah, it was too cheesy. Yeah, it was it too cheesy? <laughs> I love, I love John Williams, but it was just like you know he opens the door and it's like it is almost like dun dun dun. And I was like, no. I like <laughs> that though in some films. I think if some films do it quite well, not everyone does. But I, I think because it's the older films, it work. I feel like with the older films, it works well in because that's kind of what I'm used to with it. Yeah, yeah, no, that I can appreciate. You that. know, yeah. but um. <laughs> Yeah, I think it did, uh, like it did well at the Oscars. And, you know, Godfather was up that year as the second one. So, you know, some big films were there as well. But So what was your number one highlight of the movie? Oh, poor new- <laughs> I'm joking. Um, no, I'm not. I was going to say Steve McQueen was mine. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I think what it is, is like, I do like the older movies. Like, I'm a big Betty Davis fan and... When I watch films like this, it makes me want to go back and watch the older films. Like I do like a lot of older films and I forget about them. It it made me laugh because I was just like, hang on a minute. This is set in the 70s and it's set in San Francisco. And the last movie I think you made me watch was set in the 70s in San Francisco, which was Day Harry. And I was like, Lorraine has a theme. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe i just i mean dirty harry like for god's sake that film is amazing oh, oh uh, before we go can we can we just talk about the camera work when it comes to like external shots here she, it... goes. <laughs> here she goes <laughs> i'm back in my yeah no no but it just, just makes me laugh of that era especially when like 
you know, they've done a close-in shot of a boat in the harbour in San Francisco and then it's like, hold on, let's quickly pan out into the foreground. Here's Paul Newman. And I hate that. I hate that in those old movies where they do that. And then they do like a shaky zoom in into a helicopter and I'm like, <laughs> but it's so, it's so stylistic of that time for, for a lot of those action sort of style movies. It just made me laugh every time I saw a shot like that. I was just like, head in hands like no, 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 no. I was like <laughs> I wonder when she's gonna come out with the whole camera work thing. sorry sorry <laughs> I knew it was there um but yeah no I just like these yeah Dirty Harry it's like one of my favorite films of all time I know yeah. I was born in the 70s so maybe there's just part of me that's like stuck there <laughs> maybe maybe in an old life you were you know just before you were born you were a you know a San Francisco detective yeah <laughs> or or you know fireman or something <laughs> I actually think Dirty Harry is based on me <laughs> they, they they saw me coming and they were like yes I can see what's gonna happen now <laughs> and he's still alive Clint Eastwood he is yeah he's well in his 90s now but yeah he's making movies as well I know he's a legend um <laughs> but yeah as always hello Thanks for coming on. And like I said, if uh, Harry mentioned, we do have Show Me the Podcast with loads of episodes on it. And uh, hopefully one day we'll get back to that. Yeah. Yeah. Never say never. Yeah. Harry's just got to have this baby first and then see how she gets on. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Sorry about that. I'll give her a few months, Grace. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Thanks for having me. I've been enjoy talking about yeah but um, you can come on again I, I, i'll try and because okay you did dirty harry but i'll try and get uh kind of more horror run horror horror <laughs> um but within limits because i know what you're like okay i do like my horror i'm a bit weird at that horror at the moment though because like, i was watching that true detective yeah series the new one that's come out the other day and i was enjoying it but the creep factor was like brought up to 11 for me and I think that's because of my hormones mm. normally I'm like fine with a bit of creep in fact I love a bit of creep yeah don't love horror I love creep um but I was like no 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 I can't watch this anymore yeah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. maybe after Wait, you've had the baby to yeah <laughs> don't, don't actually watch the film mother no fucking way no. I wouldn't watch that even pre-pregnancy no I wouldn't <laughs> recommend that to anybody especially someone who's pregnant no. I still think about that film and I'm like, why did I watch that? It was a good film, but I'm like, no. You do that all the time, though. I know. You, like, Bad Boy Bubby. I walked out, I was like, I ain't watching this. Yeah, but me and were the idiots that decided to do that for our bloody... We had to do a talk on it. I know, I don't know. I, see, I don't torture myself. I don't know why you do. That's what happens when you're born in the 70s. You just torture yourself. <laughs> Oh, right, okay. I'm a tortured detective from San Francisco. <laughs> um, but anyway, thank you for coming on. And yeah, I'll definitely have you on again for a, a more horror one. Brilliant. Thank you. Right, bye. Bye.